You're listening to Something Cheeky, a collection of podcasts where two sisters discuss TV, books, and movies with just enough reverence and far too many pop culture references. Welcome to Something Cheeky, where we discuss the TV series Vikings. I'm Nikki. I'm Rosanna. Well, I've watched the entire series. Rosanna has only watched up to what we're covering today, which is Season 1, Episode 9, All Change. In this episode, Ragnar and Rollo turn into pretty little liars, causing Lagatha to lose almost everything dear to her, even if she doesn't know it quite yet. So listeners, sorry if I sound a little weird. I have a cold. Rosanna, what was your reaction to this episode? Uh, I did not have a good reaction to this episode. (laughs) I figured. I did not like this episode at all. There was nothing good about it. Yeah. Unfortunately, these things were not surprises to me, but depressing nonetheless. Yes. It just was very like, the the scenes with Ragnar felt uh, yucky Mm. to me. You know, like they made me uncomfortable. And the scenes with Lagrotha were just... Very sad. Heart-wrenching. Yeah, just horrible. So, yeah, I didn't like this. I I don't like that this was the end of the season. Yeah. And I hope that this doesn't mean that the next season is going to start high (laughs) and then just end very low. It's all right if it starts low and then goes up. Yeah. But... This was just a real downer. That is one good thing about watching this long after it's come out, is that you don't have to wait until the next season comes out. That's true, yeah. Like, right now, I'm going crazy because I want to see the next season of Vikings. I want to see season five. Mm -hmm. But I can't because it's not on until probably November. Wow. Oh, that's a long time. Actually... I originally thought it was going to be later because because it started a little bit later. But the season four, they do in two parts. So they do the thing oh. that a lot of other shows have started where they have the hiatus in the middle. Right. But season four is also 20 episodes long. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. I think maybe they probably could have made it a little shorter. Yeah. But... Oh, okay. But I, I enjoy watching the show, and so I like any bit I can get. I would like to enjoy it more than the, than I did this <laughs> last episode, so... Well, you don't have to wait very long. That's true. <laughs> to start the next season. That's true. What was your favorite quote this time? This was a quote I picked. Uh, I wouldn't call it my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Jarl Borg is talking to Rolo, and he says, Isn't that what you want? The death of your brother and the start of your own fame? Ooh. And it's like, well, way to hit the nail on the head, dude, because that has been what Rolo has been tiptoeing around and sneaking around about this whole mm-hmm. time. He's He won't come out and just flat out say it, Yeah. but he always just gets these little digs with Ragnar and stuff, and he just finally is like, I'm done, you know, not committing to this. I'm I'm in. And, it, and I think part of it is that it took Jarl Borg saying this to get... Right, or to get Rolo to say, yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm doing. It was nice that they didn't cut off after he asked him that and have the season oh end there. Oh my gosh, yes. And you just have to wait for Rolo to answer. Because, because Rolo is getting, this whole season he's been put in this particular circumstance of questioning his loyalty over and over and over again. And it wouldn't have surprised me if they left us there. Well, and every time he has stood up and and refused to go against Ragnar. I know. Often for what seemed like selfish reasons, but still. And even even through most of this episode, he wouldn't say anything bad about Ragnar. When Jarl Borg... Yeah, what? <sighs> kept asking, Every time I hear the name Jarl Borg, I think the Borg. And I just think he's going to ask someone to assimilate. <laughs> I can't stop. It's the weirdest name. <laughs> it's terrible. It's a really strange name. Also, with Jarl in the front, the... Those, it doesn't sound very good. Jarl Borg. It's hard to say. And Jarl sounds a lot like Earl. I'm not sure why they use the two different terms because... Because that's what it, it means, right? Is that... That's what I think. I think that they mean the same thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Maybe it's a, a higher level. Just Maybe it's just a different part of, you know, like a dialect kind of thing. Wikipedia says that an Earl is a member of the nobility. It's akin to the Scandinavian form Jarl. So it's the same word. Why are they using it... Like, they're different things. They're both chieftains. Right. Yeah. Because that's what it seemed like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. All right. I don't get why they're using it when it's interchangeable. Well, if we ever get, like, an actor or producer from the Vikings on our show, we'll ask them. <laughs> hey, actors and producers from Vikings, would you like to come on our show? <laughs> <laughs> 
If any listeners out there has any connections, please... Hook us up! <laughs> I'm going to start cold emailing people from Twitter or something. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that this time we do what we've done before, where I go through all the action of one area first, because it, there was just so much jumping back and forth. So I was going to start with Kattegat. Okay. Lagertha's there. She's not eating. She starts out this episode just really upset, still grieving, Mm-hmm. And she ends this episode the same way. She really doesn't get any relief at all. She cannot catch a break. Yeah, she goes to see the seer because she's been having nightmares. And he won't give her anything. Right. See, she didn't even want to do that. Siggy kind of pushed her to do that because she didn't really want to find out her fate necessarily. Which it seems like that was a pretty good feeling from her after we find out what Ragnar's been doing. Yeah. And what happens to Gita? The description of her nightmares are so scary. The shadows creep toward her when she falls asleep, and she wakes up and they go away, and they start to come back and she falls asleep again. Just, ugh. And the seer says they're from Hell's Hall, which um, I looked up the goddess Hell is basically like the underworld goddess. And her name is Hell with one L, not two. Hmm, okay. Yeah, I guess she's kind of like Persephone. Oh, okay. Or I guess she's more like Hades, not really Persephone. Yeah, I was going to say, it seems like she's she's more a a female Hades. Yeah. Uh, The seer does admit that Ragnar is in danger, says it's from the magical world, but will not tell her more. I can understand. At first, it seems like being a seer would be kind of cool, because you'd get to know everything that's going to happen. But having to know all the bad things and decide whether or not you're going to tell people about them sounds super depressing. Yeah. It's like being an oncologist. (laughs) I guess. That doesn't sound like a good job at all. I would hate that job. I'm thinking of Wilson from House, where he was so nice, but he had to give such bad news all the time. It would suck being an oncologist. It really would. But the thing about being a seer is... So even knowing the bad stuff, it seems like you would still have some empowerment about warning or guiding or suggesting. I mean, I know you can't make people do stuff, but at least you could have some part in maybe helping. I'm not sure if the the Norse uh, religion really has anything about destiny versus free will and being able to change your fate. So it's possible. They have talked about that. They've said that that what's fated to you will happen. Mm -hmm. But Lagertha has said she doesn't believe that. And she said to Ragnar, I don't think you believe it either. So, eh. Forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Either way. But if the seer believes it, then it wouldn't really help much to tell people. That's true. Because if you didn't think they could do anything about it, it'd be pointless. But, But you could prepare for it, maybe. Well, we were talking before killing the messenger. You know, it's it's going to be hard to, to live with that. Yeah, I don't think there's really a good way for him to... It, it, unless he just never told anybody that he could see the future. <laughs> just yeah. live a normal life. <laughs> Lagertha is worried sick about Ragnar, who's in danger from himself, she thinks. Mm-hmm. While we see him, he's just off gallivanting around with another woman at this point. She doesn't necessarily need to be so worried. I feel like she needs to be worried about herself at this point. Yes. It's like when you're in an airplane and you're supposed to put your own mask on, man. Yeah. And then we have the outbreak. Siggy is patient zero because they don't understand germ transmission. Exactly. In medieval times. Or hand washing. Or, yeah. Yeah. It seems kind of like sweating sickness. Everybody's very sweaty, but maybe it's just a regular sickness. Though that, I looked it up, uh, outbreaks weren't in Europe until like the 15th century. Oh. Though there were massive outbreaks of it, and they never found a cure for it. Yeah, it could have just been a really bad fever. Yeah. Because a fever, if it's high enough, will kill you. That's true. So it could be that some of them were just, their bodies were better equipped to fight the fever. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, they needed a quarantine, which they don't understand yet. Right. I really needed Kai from Vampire Diaries to come in, because he was in... (laughs) I can't remember his name in the show, but he was in a show called Containment. Oh. He was this cop that helped set up a quarantine. I was like, I don't remember Kai doing a quarantine <laughs> in Vampire Diaries, but okay. It's, I should say Chris Wood is the actor. Oh, okay. That makes but sense. But I, I can't, re- I can never remember character names, so yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need Vampire Diaries' worst villain ever to come in and save it's everyone. Save people. <laughs> He's also in Supergirl. Have you seen that? I have seen one episode of Supergirl. He is not in the first episode of Supergirl. Well, that makes sense because I don't remember him. Yeah. So. I like him. I like him too. I actually liked him as Kai, even though Kai was terrible. He was, a, he was funny. He was. He brought a lot of levity yes. to the very dramatic show of Vampire Diaries. Dark themes, yeah. Which was full of some crappy villains. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, that show was ridiculous anyhow. I love but... that show. It's amazingly horrible. <laughs> it is amazingly horrible. I, 
I loved it so much. Everyone is so pretty. Yes. Holy crap. Well, most of them are vampires, and vampires are pretty, so. That's true. Or they almost everyone becomes a vampire by the end, so. Yes. Or is a vampire one point and then not? <laughs> yeah, that's a weird show. Yeah, there's that too. Anyhow, there are no vampires and Vikings yet. Not yet. So this wasn't that kind of sickness. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> <sighs> so basically everybody that's been left behind that is a named character is sick except for Lagertha. Yep. So she's immune. Siggy Gita, Tiri, Applestand. Oh, were you worried about Ap- Applestand? I was. I was like, did they save him last episode just to kill him this time? <laughs> I was not Seriously? ready to lose him. Yeah. And I thought his hair looked better even if he was sick. He looked very Jesus-y when he was sick. I liked sick. his hair better down than pulled back in that like half pony. Oh yeah, that was bad. That wasn't a good look. But this was okay. Even if he was sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was a little worried about him, but I figured he was probably going to survive. However, I also thought Gita was going to survive. Ah. I really did. Because Lagertha told her she she wasn't going to die. Partially, and just, I'm like, you're, you're not going to take two kids from her in one year, are you? Well, yes, actually we are. Lagertha said something about the gift of prophecy. Did you think that maybe she had had some sort of dream, or that she was just saying that because she wanted it to be true? I think she was trying to will it into ah. truth. As a parent, I think... I can understand her. If I say it enough times, it, I can make it true. And I wasn't super surprised that Tiri died. I figured once everybody started, I actually thought Siggy was going to die. Ah. Um, and when she didn't, I was like, oh, I bet it's Tiri. What would that mean for Rolo if Siggy had died? Uh, I hope it means he'll be so sad he'll jump off a cliff. <laughs> That's exactly what I hope. Can you imagine he would ever have so much feeling for someone else that he would do that. Well, and not only that, but he just loves himself too much to commit suicide. Yeah. It would just be so sad for the world if Rolo wasn't around. That's what I imagine he thinks in his head. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah. It looked like half the town was dead. (gasps) I know. All those fires. And then hardly anyone was there. And just bodies all over the, the pier. Man. I hope when Ragnar gets back, he just is so guilt-ridden for not being there and for doing what he was doing while he was gone that he just turns over a new leaf. I was imagining when he returns and sees Lyrtha and all she needs is someone to comfort her because she's lost her child and most of her town. And there he is with a knocked up woman. A knocked up princess. Yeah. What? I mean, when all, all you're doing, you just you see the ship coming in the distance and you're like, finally. Finally, he's here to help me get through this. I need support. Yeah. And then another woman comes there who would probably be pretty pregnant at that point because I don't know how long it took him to travel. Oh, poor Lagertha. I want her to just punch him in the face so hard that it breaks his nose. And I was so happy when Bjorn said, if Lagertha was here, she would cut your balls off. Okay, yes. I love that he said that. I think it's weird that he calls her Lagertha. <laughs> Wasn't that kind of odd? Yeah, it was a little weird. But yes, I'm glad he said that because he, I think that he respects his father, but mm-hmm. I think he equally respects his mother. And, and I love that he was defending her yeah. and standing up for her when she couldn't be there. Do you think this is going to change his loyalty to Ragnar and maybe transfer some of that to Lagertha? So he's not a mama's boy, but you know, more supportive of her or protective? P- protective, maybe. I don't think that he is more supportive to Ragnar at this point. I think he's equal. I think mm. he respects them equally. But I can, I can see him respecting Ragnar less than he does, than he did, but continuing to respect Lagertha. Yeah. The last time we see Lagertha in this episode, in this season, she's staring at the water again, like she did when she was waiting for Ragnar to return from England and just worrying about him, which was a sad remembrance considering how different his return's going to be this time. Okay, let's go to Jotaland. All right. Or Gotland, if you just read it. <laughs> I don't know how to say it because when they were at Uppsala, they said Jotaland. Ah. And we have Jarl Borg, the assimilator. I always want to say that like a pirate. Jarl Borg. <laughs> Jarl Borg be here for ya. Now, if there are any pirates listening, I apologize <laughs> for butchering your accent. <laughs> they love our Vikings episodes, Nikki. Of course. <laughs> Jarl Borg. Half our listener base is just pirates. <laughs> Well, they can get internet out on the ships now, so. (laughs) 
I've got a satellite connection. Why am I speaking like I'm an Irish person? I don't know, but that was a pretty good pirate. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I had the satellite connection in my peg leg. No, nope, that was that was too Irish. <laughs> It was it was equal parts too Irish and terrible Irish. <laughs> I apologize to our Irish listeners. <laughs> we start out with Borg being super rude to everybody. Yeah. And he changed his tune pretty quick, didn't he? When he found out it was Ragnar, who was getting super famous. Yep. Well, because he went west, nobody else would. I mean, that's... A big deal. Though not historically accurate. (laughs) Well, why would we bring facts into this, Nikki? Don't be weird about it. Why start now? Oh, and it's really obvious that Rollo was still super jealous that Ragnar's the famous one. And it's almost like people are pointing it out to him to make him (laughs) even more (laughs) mad. Right? Like, like between Mm -hmm. Ragnar and Borg, they were just like throwing it in his face over and over again. Yeah, the Borg was baiting him constantly. I mean, it's it's like everybody's trying to make Rollo mad. So to, they're forcing him into action. He is really easy to manipulate. Yeah, he is. And it's so obvious what his pain point is. Yeah, and so why is Ragnar trying to make him mad? It's It seems intentional. What part did you think Ragnar was trying to make him mad at? When he made him stay behind? Yes, it's when he made him stay and when he took Floki. See, I understood that. I thought that was because uh, Rolo jumped in and said, of course we can negotiate. But he had no power to negotiate and Ragnar couldn't. And so Ragnar was mad at him for trying to take over that emissary position. I think the, f- the feelings that I get from Ragnar towards Rolo are so um, antagonistic. He's like egging him on, it feels mm-hmm. like. He's so smirky with him. This whole episode, Ragnar's face was just one giant smirk. It was! It was. And he just, he, he'll he say something to somebody like Rolo or anybody, really, and then he'll smirk. Like, mm-hmm. like you can think you can do whatever you want, but you're going to do what I want. Yeah. And he's like that the whole time. And Rolo is not the person to do that with. Because Rolo takes it as a challenge. Whether that's actually what Ragnar is doing or not, he's his brother. He should know that that's what he's like. <laughs> It's almost like he's trying to get him to commit to being against him. You know what I mean? It's almost like he has the feeling and he just wants to get it out in the open. So he's just poke, poke, poking him until he stands up. Maybe he isn't sure he can trust Rolo. And so he wants to find out if he really can't. I really think if he thinks he can trust Rolo, he's way dumber than he appears to be. Yeah. He he might just be not sure. It could just be. Maybe he really is just trying to push him into committing one way or the other. Maybe he saw the look with Lagertha at the trial. Maybe. They had to mention when they were talking about the ash tree that it might be Yggdrasil, the tree that holds up the sky. Mm -hmm. And I've heard of this before, so I looked it up to find out more. It's the world tree, which when you see pictures of a tree and it's in a circle and the roots go circularly on the bottom and the top touches the heavens, Mm -hmm. that's the world tree. That's what they're talking about. Do they have a tree kind of like that in um, Sword of Shannara? Oh, that was... Wasn't that kind of like that? Maybe. I don't know. It, it was holding all the demons at bay. Oh, okay. I thought it was... It was just a really big tree, so... Yeah. <laughs> I never did read the books, but I've seen the show. I don't know how, how accurate the show is to the book. I'm not sure. I haven't I don't know. I, I don't think it's super accurate from what I've seen. Well, we'll just say it's similar as in it's a big tree. <laughs> yes. It's very pretty in the show. Yes. The whole show is beautiful. It's filmed in New Zealand. It is a very, very pretty show. It's not very good. It's not very good at all. No. But it's pretty. So I was going to tell you about this tree from what I looked up. Because I, what I really knew about it was from uh, a book series called The Iron Druid Chronicles. Which are pretty interesting. I They can get a weird later in the Chronicles. I think they kind of run out of interesting stories. <laughs> but it's, it's a... a an actual druid who was survived from um, like ancient Celtic times in Ireland. And he's lived for 2000 years or something um, and kept himself alive with his druidic magic. And he owns an occult bookshop in Arizona. Of course he does. Uh huh. And he goes on, you know, little adventures and things and they're very interesting. But one of his adventures is climbing Yggdrasil and he, he's climbing there to get to Asgard, which is the heavens at the top. That's where all the gods live. And so he climbs and along the way he meets some of the creatures like the squirrel. So there's a squirrel. I'm going to 
butcher these names. I'm so sorry for this. I'm so sorry for any squirrels out there listening. <laughs> <laughs> any Norse historians or Oh, okay, okay. Any his- historian squirrels. Mm-hmm. Or people that actually know how to pronounce words that have umlauts in them. Ratatoskar is this squirrel, and he carries messages between the hawk sitting on top of an eagle at the top of the tree and what? the worm at the bottom, who's an, actually a dragon. The worm with a Y instead of O. But there's a dragon at the bottom who is chewing at the roots, and he also eats people that are guilty of murder, adultery, and oath-breaking, which are the worst crimes in the Norse religion. Okay, so just to clarify, it's it's a hawk sitting on an eagle? Uh-huh. The hawk has a name, but the eagle does not have a name. Okay, Um. so here's my question uh-huh. to that. Uh, the squirrel delivers messages back and forth mm-hmm. f- for a hawk that has wings. That's correct. Okay, all right. Just just <laughs> clarifying the absurdity of that. Okay. There's also a giant that lives in eagle form named Hreskvelgar. But not the one that the hawk sits on. No. Okay, a different eagle. Yeah, he causes the wind to blow by beating his wings. Cool. Yeah, there are also um, four stags, Dane, Dvalin, Dunair, and Jurapror. People think there may be symbolic of the four elements or seasons or phases of the moon. Okay. It's not really clear. But I thought what was coolest was the dragon who eats the people who are guilty of crimes because oath breaking is one of the biggest crimes in Old Norse history, and so is adultery. We see hmm. both of those things in this episode. So it makes me wonder if, if there's any sort of connection in the idea of them going to visit this tree and these things happening. And so here's also something strange about that, is that Ragnar does not seem to take any pause at all to cheat on Lagertha. No. He, it doesn't seem to concern him that this is a one of the three biggest crimes that you can commit. It doesn't seem to occur to him that no. it's not good. Like that Lagertha... He, okay, it doesn't seem like he even gives her a single thought. Yeah. Which... Has he decided in his mind that they're divorced because she can't have another kid? I mean, is he already so disconnected that he doesn't think it's adultery? He says he still loves her. Well, you can love somebody that you're not married to anymore. That's true. I mean, not very many people do that, but some people do. But I mean, in his mind, is this relationship as a marriage over Mm -hmm. because she can't give him what he wants? Maybe. I was surprised that when I saw this for the first time, that it only took one episode to go from him considering the possibility of someone else bearing his child to actively impregnating somebody. Yeah. That did not take... It was was his first trip. He went right there. Yup. He's the worst. He has replaced Rolo as the worst. Oh, God. Has he? Yes. Hmm. Yes. Is that just because you love Lagertha so much and so any betrayal against her is a betrayal against you? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> that is exactly. I am not even going to try to pretend that's not it. <laughs> How dare you, Ragnar? <laughs> How dare you break my heart? Now, because you're so mad at Ragnar, does that make Rollo's betrayal not feel so bad since you're just pissed? No, it's still bad. Okay. Because I feel like in betraying Ragnar, Rollo's betraying more than just Ragnar. He's betraying this whole group of Vikings that they go out on these raids together. This is his sort of family. And, and by extension, Lagertha. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely Lagertha. And the whole Kattegat. I mean, that's his community. And he, going against the Earl is going against all of them, I think. One thing I wondered about Rolo when he decided to go against Ragnar is the whole cost-benefit analysis in his head. He doesn't seem to be getting much out of this, except maybe possibly the chance of becoming famous outside of his brother's shadow. But... Maybe Lagertha. Yeah, that's what I considered, because Ragnar is back, and he has Aslog with him. Yeah. Which I'm sure Rolo has seen, so I wonder if he thinks that if he can separate himself from Ragnar, not only might he become famous on his own, he might not be associated by Lagertha with Ragnar. And since she's obviously going to be pissed, maybe that'll give him a chance there. I mean, does he think that, that he might go so far as to kill Ragnar? Because that would make him Earl, and then he could have Lagertha. Yeah, I still wonder about Siggy here, but I imagine he would figure out a way to make that work for him. I don't think that he would have any trouble dropping Siggy if Lagertha was available. Yeah. 
He doesn't seem he doesn't seem like he loves anyone. It's true. Even Ragnar. He just is like, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. And why is he like that? Why can't, is he so, does he so much want fame for himself that that overpowers the love for his brother? Or did something happen that we don't even know about that already created the short sort of uh, rift? It seems like fame is the most important thing to him. We have never seen him get very emotional about anything. But in the scene where Borg says, and yet I've never heard of you, Rollo had tears in his eyes. Yeah, he was really mad. He has never been that demonstrably emotional. But like, what kind of person just cares about that? Really? I think there are plenty of people that just care about that. Well, those are not good people. I don't want to be friends with them. So the ash tree visit, just the whole area is beautiful. Makes me want to go there and walk around. And the guys see Aslog bathing, which I'm assuming is in hot springs, because otherwise it'd be really cold. And she has a whole bunch of guards. Did you suspect how important she was? I actually thought when I first saw her and the guards that she was married to Borg. I, I thought oh. she was the wife. Well, I mean, that would have made sense to me why she'd have so many guards. But apparently I was incorrect. Yeah, and she's a princess. She's child of the famous shield maiden, Broomhilda. Um, and I couldn't find any information on a shield maiden named that. There's There was a Valkyrie and shield maiden, but that's a mystical creature. So obviously not her actual mother. And that would make her a queen, but what was she the queen of? Who is, what, what is she the princess of right now? Because it's That's not Jarl Borg's property, because he's pretty particular about that being his. And we have a king, but apparently not in the same royal family as Aslog. It was weird when she said she was a princess. Oh, wait. They're in Sweden. Ragnar and Horik are from Norway. It's a different country. But if she's the princess and her parents are dead, isn't she ruling the country then? Not necessarily. And we didn't actually get confirmation that she's not married. That's true. We did not. You know, and so here's the thing. Ragnar really wants a son and he can't just find, you know, a woman in a village or whatever. He has to knock up a princess. Oh, because he's Ragnar <sighs> Lothbrok. He really seems, his ego seems to have grown substantially since the first episode to be fair no i don't i don't want to give ragnar any any brownie points but he was interested in her mind before he ever met her and knew she was a princess and tried to get her to come mostly naked no no, no. nothing no <laughs> but i mean he didn't know who she was he didn't know he she saw was important. that she was beautiful and he decided he wanted to have sex with her not maybe <laughs> that's exactly okay. what happened <laughs> I just mean before he knew. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure she seemed intelligent and mysterious, but... And very, very tall. And then it does not take long at all. And then 12 hours later, she's like, good job, I'm pregnant. What? How could you possibly know that? Okay, and then also, he just gets this, like, such a happy expression on his face. Like, he just, oh, okay, well, you must know you're a woman. You must know 12 yeah. hours later. What? <laughs> He's so content with no reassurance whatsoever. So much no reassurance needed that he doesn't sleep with her again. He's so sure mm -hmm. that she's right about being pregnant. Are you sure he didn't sleep with her again? That was after he promised Bjorn he wouldn't sleep with her again. So did he sleep with her again? Well, the episode ended with him in her room with his... He was like kissing her stomach. So I'm assuming that so sex So he's followed. an adulterer and an oath breaker because he told Bjorn he wasn't going to do it. And he's murdered mm -hmm. tons of people, so he should just probably go to hell. Yep, I think so. I'm so mad at him. I liked him so much in the beginning of the season, and I'm so mad at him now. And Bjorn had to listen to his father having sex with someone besides his mother. That, oh my god, that sounded really you bad. You know what? Here's the thing. Just don't take Bjorn, if that's what you're going to do. I was really surprised to see Bjorn there. I was like, why did you take Bjorn to this thing? He should have just left him home. Ragnar did seem really guilty, at a couple of points, do you think he would have if Bjorn hadn't have ever said anything? Oh, I don't think he would have felt any guilt whatsoever. I think any that he had was because Bjorn was there. Yeah. He's got one goal in mind, and that's what he's doing. He's doing everything to get to that point. He wants the sun. And is it... Why exactly does he want sun so badly? Is it just because he feels it's owed to him since the seer prophesied that? I think that maybe he thinks he's owed because of what the seer said, but... But why do you, why, you have Bjorn, why do you need another son? And just because the seer said so doesn't mean that, doesn't mean that you have to go out of your way to do anything to get to that. If, if you believe in fate, hmm. you'll have the sons. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I mean? I don't know. Well, he is a yeah. man of action. We are men of action, are we not? Lies do not become us. Except that's this thing though, Ragnar doesn't even lie about it. 
He doesn't even try to cover it's up true. what he's doing. And I think he's going to show up back at Kattegat. And Lagertha is going to be completely devastated again for the third time this year. And he is not going to be apologetic whatsoever. Here's a question. Do you think Aslog is actually pregnant? I don't know how she could possibly know this early, but I think that's where the story is going. So okay. I don't know if that means that like she's going to be the lady to the Earl and Lagertha is going to get kicked out or Lagertha is going to beat her up and tell her to go back home to Sweden. I don't know, but... I can't imagine Lagatha ever beating a pregnant woman. Maybe the princess will die in childbirth and Lagatha can raise the baby. Okay, I'll go with that. He did seem worried after he found out or he was told that Aslock was pregnant. I couldn't tell if he was worried about hurting Lagatha or just of her finding out. I don't know why he would, though. I think that was his intention. I don't know. Really? Was. After the last episode? You don't think that that's what he was going for? I don't. I. It seemed so just doing whatever I feel like doing. Yeah, he does that too. Maybe just with the hope that it might happen, but not really being the driving force. Or that he hadn't really thought it through. Maybe he was like, I want another kid. It'd be awesome if I had another kid. I'm gonna have sex with somebody. Oh crap. Now look at all the consequences that I've got. I... I don't think that somebody that has respect for their spouse would be doing the things that he's doing. So mm -hmm. I don't know how much I think he's worried about it, I guess. Do you think Aslog is just using him? Or She seemed to know who he was when the guys mentioned, you know, they were there with Ragnar. Yeah. And then she insisted on an apology. And then she came, neither dressed nor undressed. I'm not sure how she could have really gotten that one to work, though. Yeah. Anything less than a very provocative outfit. She could have just refused. And then... She certainly gave no pause uh, in sleeping with him. What's the goal there? Is there a big pool of bachelors for princesses in Sweden? Well, I don't think that a married person should be part of a pool. Well, he seems to be an up-and-coming person. He's married! <laughs> He's off the market. Apparently not. Well, apparently not, but she should have respected that. I don't know if she even Yeah, they never him. showed anything with him telling her he was married. Though it seemed like they were certainly in each other's confidence because she knew the seer had prophesied he was going to have more sons. So he's telling her some stuff in their little pillow talk. I that I, I don't know why that almost bothered me as much as him having sex with her. Because it's very intimate. Way more. I mean, that's something the children didn't know. Labertha told Gita like it was this special thing. It's the emotional infidelity, not just the physical. Of, and a betrayal of confidence. Yeah. Let's go to Horik. We had a little piece of him and Floki having a little bromance, talking about the stories of Fenrir and different people. I love the stories that Floki tells. He is a great storyteller. It's because the Vikings didn't have a written language. All the stories had to be passed on orally. So it makes sense that people would have different versions of stories or completely new stories no one had ever heard. So it'd be neat to visit new people in new places and hear all the different stories. Though the, the spider and the fly part was a little on the nose. And I didn't like Horik as much in this episode as I did last one. I don't want him to be schemy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just yeah. want him to just... But I guess if you're going to get to that point, then you have to be that way, I suppose. And he put Ragnar in such yeah. an unpleasant position too, just refusing completely to negotiate. And he still seems to be implying that he wishes Ragnar would just kill the Borg. Uh, we get back to the Borg, Jarl <laughs> the Borg. And Ragnar's not going to defy the king because there's no deal coming. Even though I thought that was a good deal. So did I. Yeah, it seems pretty reasonable. It, do you think that Horik maybe just wants a fight? I think Horik thinks that he should get whatever he wants and he's not willing to compromise. Yeah. Because if you're a king, you do get what you want and you don't have to compromise. Later, Ragnar is in bed and he cuts his hand, wipes the blood on his face, just like Lagertha had wiped the sacrifice, the sacrificial goat's blood on her face. I was trying to see if there was any sort of comparison or parallel there, but I don't know. I think Lagertha really believes that she might be able to make a difference with these sacrifices mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, I think Ragnar's a drama queen. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just thinks really highly of himself and he probably gives his blood a lot of value. Mm. We get another little visit from a raven. Bjorn sees one. Is it Odin again? I, it didn't really seem to fit in with anything. Yeah, they don't really say what it is, so... Yeah, there are all these things with birds and I never can tell if they're trying to be symbolic or not with them. <laughs> or if it's just a bird. Yeah. 
They totally tricked us with making us think that Ragnar heard Rolo because he, you know, he was having the conversation with the Borg and we saw Ragnar creeping around in the halls and then Rolo heard floorboards creaking, which I think I only noticed because I had the closed captioning on. Yeah, I did have it on too. <laughs> I'm not sure I would have heard it, but he, it said floorboards creaking and then he looked to the side, but I wondered if maybe it was Bjorn because he was up. Maybe. Also, I don't know. I, and I don't know if I'm spoiling anything or not because I don't remember. <laughs> from this episode <laughs> oh good to know <laughs> yeah yeah i wondered if if someone else was listening and was going to be able to tell on him basically because at this point we don't know exactly what what the borg wants rollo to do we don't know if he's gonna openly fight with him we don't know if he's gonna try to be some sort of double agent yeah. or what because rollo could get some pretty good information i would think fighting with ragnar and why why is Borg gonna fight Ragnar, why wouldn't he just take the fight straight to the king? Well, he'd start with who's there, I would assume. Though it seems like it'd be pretty easy to get someone in your house that's sleeping there. Though, I'm not sure if the Norse have the, uh, what's the... If we've eaten together, I can't kill you. Yes. Is he uh, a fray? <laughs> he might be. But that'd make him an oath breaker, so does he care? That's I don't true. know. I don't know. That's all I've got for this season about the action. All right, so let's look at the season as a whole. After you've seen all the choices that Ragnar has made up to this point, especially the last couple of episodes, do you think Rollo and Ragnar might be more alike than you thought at the beginning of the season? Unfortunately, yes. Ragnar has dropped way, way down on my list. Yeah, you really liked him at first, and you hated Rollo, then he got better. I still don't like so Rollo. I mean... Even when I didn't hate him in the middle, I didn't like him because I don't think he's a good person. But yeah. Ragnar has just like, just like every episode, he just drops, 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 drops in my respect for him. He started as a good, I don't know, wholesome, <laughs> uh, loyal person. And now it just seems like he's a lot more similar to Rolo in the fact that he's loyal to himself. It seems like he started losing your appreciation once he became Earl. Before that, everything was, was good and you liked him. But once that happened, everything started changing. He started changing. Yeah. He let his, um, I don't know, his ego take over. He, he let the fact that people knew who he was made him, made him feel more important, I guess. And like, and like his great destiny, you know, he was on the path to it now that he had done that. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on the season as a whole? It started high and it's gotten real, real sad at the end. I hope that that changes. And it seems like it would be so easy for the show to dismiss Lagertha, to just sort of kick her out. And I don't think that's what's going to happen, but I don't know what they're going to do with her. You can't have two wives, you know? So, and now that Gita's gone, I don't know if Lagertha is, is going to be able to get through that, especially without the support from yeah. husband. I mean, I mean, how could she, how is she going to deal with that? And the thing with Siggy is, I think Siggy's being a good friend to Lagertha, but I don't know why she's being a good friend to her. Is she being a good friend to her because she wants to be her friend? Or is she just buttering her up but knowing that she's going to marry Rolo and be, you know, on top again. Do you think it could be a mix? She could be conflicted herself and find herself liking Lagertha and wanting to be her friend, but still having these. I think that them both losing a daughter oh. is going to make them probably closer because that's something that they shared. Not just that they both lost a daughter, but they lost a daughter in the same day to the same thing. And they both survived and they both lost their husbands, mm -hmm. kind of. Because I really think... Lagertha's going to feel abandoned when she sees what Ragnar's done. And I don't, I don't know how she's going to yeah. deal with that. At least she'll still have Bjorn, who stood up for her. You know. Next week, we're going to talk about Season 2, Episode 1, called Brothers War. Yeah, I'm not surprised to hear that. All right, Rosanna, what's your top three for this episode? Top three for our season finale mm -hmm. is Depressing inevitabilities. <laughs> so these are things that happened that I fig I figured were inevitable. They were going to happen, but they also made me sad. First one is the Horik versus Borg. I didn't think really at any point that this was going to come to 
a compromise or mutually agreed upon solution. Um, I think they set it up to Horik, to King Horik saying, this guy's, we're going to fight. Mm-hmm. I'm going to kill this guy because I want this land and he won't let me have it. Second one is the inevitability of Ragnar cheating on Lagertha. I mean, I think in the last episode, it, it was just... It was inevitable. That's why I called it that. <laughs> I, I think that as soon as he said that, I knew he was going to because he wants that son. Or many sons, I guess. Maybe she's, maybe the princess is like pregnant with triplets. I don't know. Uh, maybe he's going to have just a bunch of sister wives. And they're all going to have uh-huh. a son. Oh, God forbid this princess is knocked up with a girl. Good grief. Oh. We're all going to be in trouble. He's probably going to get mad at her too. Like she has any <laughs> control over it. But I don't want to feel sorry for her. So let's not go there. And then the last one, of course, is the... Brother versus brother, Ragnar v. Rolo. I think that through the whole season, Rolo has seemed wishy-washy, even though he's always eventually gone mm-hmm. the right way. But it's no surprise that when he's really pushed to it... He chooses his own fame. He does. There's, th- I mean, this is his character. This is what we've been shown about him. This is what you've suspected all along. Yes, he, he totally uh, snaked out, but in the opposite <laughs> way. Snape turned out to be good. Rolo confirms that he is bad. Maybe it's all a ruse and he's going to be a double agent, but for Ragnar. I guess that could happen. And you know, the thing about that is he's he's kind of done that kind of stuff. I mean, he, he's... <sighs> no, I think he's going to fight him. I think, okay. I think they're going to fight each other. I mean, it seems like when you're talking about Vikings, one of them's got to die, right? That's that's what their fights are. But mm. I would be surprised if we lost either one of these characters. Who do you think would win in a fight between the two of them? Ragnar v. Rolo? I think Ragnar is a better fighter. I think okay. Rolo is madder. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's a pretty even face-off. I don't know. Rolo really, really wants this. Because if... Because if you're famous as Ragnar, then how famous is the person that kills you? Even more, right? Hmm. Well, he doesn't want to lose his brother. His brother isn't standing in his way. Rolo's brother is standing in his way. But I mean, if it comes to it, Ragnar is going to kill him to keep from being killed. If he thinks he's losing, it's a self-preservation. So I had something a little different for this season finale. I made my own top three for this season. Ooh, great. My top three... (laughs) are things that this season was missing. They're all female-centric, too. Yeah. Number one, we never got to see Lagatha teaching Gita or Bjorn to fight. I would have loved to see her teaching either or both of her children. Number two, Lagatha did not have any friendships with women. And I don't count Siggy because I don't trust her. And she's a servant yeah. at this point. That's true. Were there no other women? <laughs> yeah, there there are women all over the place. There are even it... other shield maidens. Mm-hmm. Are they not friends? They don't They don't have a club or wine night or something? <laughs> a wine night. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your best goat horn and we'll drink our wine. But even before she was the Earl's wife, she didn't have any, that we ever saw any friends. Number three, more female characters that Ragnar and Rollo were not sleeping with. <laughs> were there any? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. really get first of all there's just a dearth of female characters in the first place which i get that it's vikings and fighting but women fought too and there were just as many women as men so well and we learned about some of the vikings that are part of ragnar's raiding group and then during the fight we saw some were women so why didn't we learn about them we didn't even see them on the boat no, I would have loved to see them and learn their names. I want shield means to get names. We know the names of most of the guys. Why not the women too? Yeah, exactly. Those are good, Nikki. I like that. Thanks. Maybe I'll do this for every season finale. All right, you ready for predictions? What's happening next season? Okay, next season two, episode one opens up. What's going on? Homecoming. Ragnar's home with okay. uh, his girlfriend. I mean, what what else do you call her, really? Mistr- his mistress? Yeah. Bjorn is standing there, also very angry in the face. Just how humiliating would that be for Lagertha waiting for him to come and for him to walk up with a woman? I mean, it's just disrespect after disrespect after disrespect after... I mean, it's just so many Mm -hmm. punches that she is not in a state to be able to accept. This is... I don't know how much time it's going to be, but to get over the loss of a child is not going to happen in six weeks. Or two months or four months. 
she's maybe going to get to the point where she's not completely miserable every single day and then he's going to show up with this woman. And then she's going to have to go through it all over again because she's going to have to tell Ragnar that his daughter's dead. She's going to have to tell Ragnar, your daughter died while you were sleeping with another woman. Yeah. You know, I love Lagertha and I think that she's a strong character and I hope that she doesn't lose that or just give up. Just, just say, well... What else have I got? What's even the point? Mm -hmm. I just, I hope she doesn't just fall into this deep depression that she can't figure out a way out of. I really want her to hit him. I really want her to hit him <laughs> in the face. Even with like a club, not even just her fist, just knock him the heck out. <laughs> I don't know. And, and it's hard. I think it would be hard to expect the people in the village to respect her when she's been treated this mm -hmm. way. Through no fault of her own. Especially when they are one, they have such a famous relationship, yeah. too, sounds like. So what we're hoping for is that episode one starts and it's just 50 minutes of Lagertha beating up Ragnar. Yeah. Yes. I'm okay with that. I'm also all right if Bjorn hops in and gets in a couple shots, too. I... That's... Yeah, that's what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> It's time for Cheek of the Week, where we talk about something that we really like and want to tell each other about and to tell you about, listeners. My Cheek of the Week is because, obviously, I really like to watch movies, and when I watch movies, I eat tons of popcorn, as you should. <laughs> and so the popcorn I eat, you know, I've had all kinds of microwave popcorn, and it's fine, but the best popcorn I can make is with this air popper I have. That is amazing. It's super fast, too. It doesn't take really much longer than a regular container of microwave popcorn takes. It's by Wabash Valley Farms. It's called Whirly Pop Stove Top Popcorn Popper. <laughs> there are a lot of peas. <laughs> but it's really good. All you do is you just get like some bulk popcorn and then you stick it in there. You melt some butter. Use oil if you want instead of butter. I put a ton of different stuff in my popcorn. I make it with nutritional yeast and cayenne pepper and garlic powder and onion powder and paprika and salt and pepper and sometimes all of those things. Sometimes just a few. <laughs> Extra butter most of the time. But you, you can put in basically anything. I've also seen recipes for making things like caramel corn as well, which I haven't tried mm. yet because I probably don't need just a <laughs> bunch of sugar-coated popcorn, even though it's delicious. So I will eventually try that. I may have to let you know how it goes. But it's really easy to use. You just stick it in and you stick it on top of the stove and you just turn the little handle. It makes you feel very old-fashioned. There's a little crank you get to turn to make sure it doesn't stick and burn on the bottom and then you eat it and it's amazing and it's delicious and it makes a ton of popcorn that's awesome and a lot of talk about popcorn <laughs> <laughs> i don't actually really like popcorn i i don't know you who are you <laughs> yeah i disown you now officially but i might like it if i added all that stuff to it or different yeah, combinations so good. yeah adding the nutritional yeast at first i thought was kind of weird but it makes it it's almost like a cheesy flavor hmm and I do love caramel corn, even though I don't like popcorn. Yeah. So it just, it's really fun to make and everyone putting in different stuff. And I probably shouldn't learn that though. I always <laughs> imagine it one of those things where all the whole family's standing around putting in different <laughs> things, even though it's always just me making my own popcorn. In front of the stove. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. That's funny. What's your cheek? So my cheek of the week is a person slash podcast slash author. <laughs> oh, that's a lot. Um, so I just wanted to talk about Gretchen Rubin. Uh, I started listening to Gretchen Rubin's podcast, uh, more than a year ago. She does it with her sister, coincidentally. Oh, nice. Um, and the podcast is called Happier. And it's just a really, I don't know, it's like a really nice podcast about ways to make your life happier. She's got this great quiz on personality types. And then she, and it's called, uh, she calls it the four tendencies. And then once you decide or figure out which tendency you are, she talks about different ways to help yourself set and keep good habits. Oh. So it's really, really interesting. And it's based on how you deal with inner and outer accountability. So it's, it's really, really cool. And every week she talks about that and she and her sister talk about a lot of different things. She lives in New York and her sister lives in LA. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a great, it's a great podcast and it's called Happier. And then also Gretchen Rubin has written several books and the few that I've read are The Happiness Project, 
happier at home and better than before. And the happiness project is this book that she wrote. She spent a year trying to be happier and she found all these different like pop culture, but then also actual research about ways people say you can be happier. And she spent the whole year trying out all different things. Oh, goodness. Yeah, and it's this great book about what worked, what didn't work, and the things that did work, why they worked, and how to put them into your own life. And she, um, I actually listened to the audiobooks. I bought the books too, but um, she narrates the audiobooks. And I'm a big fan of when an author reads uh, their own books. I yeah. just love what they put into it because you they're stressing what's important to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you're really getting what they want you to get out of the book. So I would recommend that to anybody that's looking for a new podcast, that's looking for, it's kind of a self-help, self-help. It <laughs> it's, it's a self-help book. <laughs> I mean, I guess it'd probably be in that section because, you know, if you're trying to make yourself happier, but it's, it's just a way to know yourself better. And she talks about that too. Know yourself better. And when you do, you can find things that work best for you because obviously not one thing is going to work great for everybody. What's the best thing you've learned about yourself after listening and reading? Okay. Honestly, this is crazy. Yeah. Be honest. (laughs) My entire day slash week even sometimes is better if I make my bed every morning. That's unexpected. I swear to God that huh. has made, it It makes me, not only does it make my day better because it, my room feels neater, it actually makes me want to keep the rest of my room neater. Oh. And then when I started doing it regularly, I decided to start decorating my bedroom. So I put things on the walls and I bought a prettier blanket and I don't leave my shoes out as much. There's something about having a made bed that, plus if it's on the weekends, the chances of me getting back in bed (laughs) are much lower if my bed is made. So I'm slightly more productive. That's, that's really neat. There's a lot that I think people could get little bits here and there out of that really could make changes. She's great. I love her so much. I love listening to her podcast. I love listening to her and her sister talk. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend her in any form. (laughs) That's awesome. How do you spell her last name? It's R-U-B-I-N. Oh, okay. And you can also follow her on Instagram and Twitter, I think. And she's got a great website that's all about her podcast and stuff too. Um, And her podcast is produced by the Panoply Network. Ah, that's They do several. Yeah. All right. So listeners, you can find all our Cheeks of the Week and send us your questions on our website, somethingcheekypodcast.com. That's our episode. Please leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at SomeCheek and Facebook.com slash SomeCheek. Also, please visit our website and learn about our other podcasts. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.